Welcome to another Deck Tactics development log. I'm Alan, and Deck Tactics is a roguelike turn-based tactic RPG deck builder game I'm making in the Godot game engine. In today's development log, I'll be going over the many updates that are gained since the last update video. This includes the new shop, a new how to play section in the start menu, a couple of small adjustments to the combat mechanics and map, as well as some new cards and units. As always, enjoy the video. The first update on the list is a major one, the shop. The shop is where the player can buy cards and other items. There will be multiple different types of shop in the game later, but for now, there's only the card shop. The card shop sells cards and in addition to that also offers another service, which is the card removal service. It costs 5 ink to remove 2 cards at the moment. The player can also reroll the shop for 10 inks. So far I set ink 2 times already. And I'm sure you guys can tell what inks are. Inks are the currency for the game. You gain ink every battle, though I haven't implemented that yet. You'll probably notice one odd thing about how I implemented my shop. In most roguelike tech builders, you often find shops scattered around the map. However, my shop is easily accessible outside the map. It's an odd design decision, I know. But the main reason why I'm doing this is that I want the players to have more opportunities to build out their deck. The way it's going to work is this. Each floor or page in my game, the shop will rotate between different types of shop. This will give the player the opportunity to plan out their next purchase and have a better ability to steer their deck to their desired build each floor. This will also incentivize the player to take on more battles when they find a card they want, which equates a battle to being more than just an obstacle to overcome to the next stage for the player, but a means to achieve a goal they themselves have set in their minds. Of course, there might be some downside to doing it this way. For instance, it might not make too much sense story-wise, but I can easily adjust the shop to go back to the traditional approach of it being part of the map if it doesn't pan out right. All in all, that's how my shop currently works. The next things on the list of things I added to the game is a how to play section in the start menu. The how to play section is a stand-in for a proper tutorial. It's there for when I send it to people online and can't be there in person to give instruction on how to play. Eventually, I will make a proper tutorial, as well as an upgrade to the how to play section into a compendium of short. And that's the how to play section. That's it for all the newly implemented features in the game. The rest of the video will detail smaller additions and improvement to the game. To start with, let's look at the map. In addition to the shop, I also added another side tab that shows the player's current deck. The deck viewer also has another function other than just viewing the player's deck. It is also where the player can set which cards appears at the start of each round. If we go back to the map, we can also see some new addition to the interface. The most notable of this is the enemy showing on the battle nodes. It doesn't show all the enemies in the node, but just the one that will appear first. I'll probably change what hint appears on the battle node, but for now it just randomly pick what enemies will appear in the battle. The right page also has some improvement. It shows the current hero unit and the amount of ink the player has, as well as some bits of lore to the game that will change accordingly in the future. And that's the last bit of improvement on the map. The last few improvements on the game all has to do with the battle system. The first few ones are as follows. I added a banner to show the start of a round and the round number. I added functionality to the unit's info windows tab. For instance, the player can view the unit's deck, draw pile, discard pile, consume pile, and expand pile, and more importantly, the unit's detail. The unit details is a bit lacking at the moment, but I will fill it up with usual information later down the line. And lastly, I added floating damage indicator to give more feedback to what the player is doing on the board. Those are the small improvements for the battle scene. The one major improvement is the addition of status effect. Adding status effect to the game took a lot of time to implement. It wasn't complicated by any means, but it did require me to improve the underlying code for the battle system and card system. Status effect in the game works similarly to other roguelike tech builders. Most of them count down during the unit's turn when they activate. 
but in some cases they can activate at the start of a round, at the end of a round, or through some special condition like after being hit. The player can look at the effect affecting the units in their unit info window. The indicator needs some improvement on readability and placement, but they are there at least. And that's about red setup for every improvement on the game I could think of. Other than improvement, there are also addition to the game's content. And by content, I mean cards and units. I added two new units, the Hound and the Alpha Hound, along with their starting cards, Bite, Jump, and Call Shadow Hound. The three existing units, the Pawn, Rook, and Slime, all have their cards reworked as well as getting new cards. The player also has several new cards added to their starting deck. Some of the new cards that I think are the most helpful includes the Shadow Stitch, which heal units for 2 HP, Cheer, which above units by adding a plus 1 to their strength, and Stab, which can stab through multiple enemies and give them the status effect Bleed. As development goes, the amount of unit cards and combat cards will eventually increase. My immediate goal is to have about 15 unit cards and 45 command cards, of which I have 5 units already functional with their AI and 20 command cards already in the game. And that covers pretty much everything for this video. My next task for this project is adding in the intent system and card pinning. But for now, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Leave a like, comment or subscribe and see you later.